This is the new member of the family. Uh, beautiful Van Electro 12 string. And I've been running through a few different setups here to test it out. And let's try a couple of them. So 12 strings are kind of known for the jangle and chime thing. And for a long time, I think I showed it in one of the last videos, I've had a fake 12 string by running an octave effect on a six string uh, and putting a tiny, tiny delay on it and mixing that in with the regular sim signal. And that works okay. Um, but uh, there's nothing quite like the sound of a 12 string. Pull over bias amp here. Um, bias has the right amps for this. So to me, the right amp is a Vox AC30. They have a certain throatiness that gets called chime. It's a little different than American amps, but you can hear it all over the early 60s Beatles. So Hard Day's Night, Help, that kind of stuff. John on a 12-string Epiphone Casino guitar. The whole sound of Mercy Beat, which... That's the general idea of the jangle. Now, I've got a few other effects here, so let me turn them off. Yeah, so this is a, um, it's an interesting setup. Dan Electro sells a couple of guitars that look the same, uh, except the only difference is the other one has two of these lipstick pickups, and that's it, here and here. Um, and I played that one, and that sounds sweet too, but this one is a lot more versatile. It's worth the extra hundred bucks. It's actually got a, a Gibson style a single coil, P90 style pickup in the rhythm position. <laughs> which is very nice, nice and gnarly. That's usually if they're going to put a humbucker somewhere, they put it there. Um, and then two of these sing, sing, single coil lipstick pickups, which together make a humbucker in the lead position. But um, if you can see down here, I don't think you can really see, but there's a little, the treble knob pops up. So that's the double coil sound. And... That's the single coil sound, a little treblier. Here, you can hear it better if I turn it down a little. Single coil. Double coil has a little bit of bass. You can hear the bass kind of drops out a little. 
And uh, the setting that I like in between so far that I'm having the most fun with is uh, both pickups on at once with the single coil. Um, this is a real trebly guitar, so you got to roll off the treble a little bit. Um, it's not sounding too bad today with the full treble on, but a lot of guitars. I'll run the treble nearly full tilt. Um, but this one, I, I, um, I'm not crazy about the sound when it's fully fully uh, trebled out to the max. So here's the trebliest it can get. So uh, I promised to explain the difference between the jangle uh, which and the chime. So we've been doing the chime, which is the Vox sound, uh, English, English uh, invasion, mercy beat kind of stuff. Um, but there's also a, a, an American version that um, I'll come up here with uh, that's based on Fender amplification instead of uh, the English Vox. The Fender amps are voiced a little differently. The speakers are different. Uh, the design is different. So um, even though the tone stack is similar with bass, treble, and middle uh, in presence, um, the actual sound of the amp uh, is EQ'd differently. So to me, if you look at an EQ, both amps have kind of a dip in here uh, in the sort of human voice, male voice range. There's a little bit of a dip in the higher part of that um, that gives uh, what's described as a hollow sound. Uh, and then the chime comes from somewhere between 2 and 5K, like right in this area. There's a little bit of noise um, and a slight boost. So it's a, it's a boost, but it's a distorted boost, a saturated boost. It's very, very sweet and um, uh, puts just a little bit of, if you turn it up a little, it gets a little gnarly. Uh, and if you keep it down, it has a voice-like quality, like kind of like um, the grain of the voice, the sandiness of a voice. Uh, and the Fenders, for their part, I think their little bump that gives the sort of Fender sound is up here. They have this um, characteristic dip down in the voice range, uh, and then it, um, their bump is a little bit higher and maybe a little bit broader, sort of looking kind of like that, and then a dip over here. And you can hear it's a different sound. So let me switch back and forth between them. Um, so this is the Fender. And this is the Vox. And you can hear that chime if you uh, imagine you can. And the Fender has a little bit more, I guess you'd call it grit, but when you play it clean, the Fender's clean tones are famous for having a ringing quality. And if you listen just from playing those two notes, you'll hear basically the difference between uh, pins and needles and mercy beats and the Beatles uh, on the one hand and uh, the birds Tom Petty REM on the other uh, so let's 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 try that again so here's the fender Here's the box. So let's try, um, I won't play the whole song again, but um, let's try that, uh, that first piece I played for you, this time on the Fender, and see if it sounds differently.
you can hear there's a difference in the, the sort of envelope of the note too. So the envelope is how it changes through time. And the Fender, as you can hear, has a little bit more bite in the transients at the beginning. So it really kind of slaps when you hit the pick on it. Um, whereas the Vox sound uh, is a little quieter. Like, actually, I don't think it's any quieter. I just think the sustain uh, is, the, is closer to the same volume as the attack. So it comes up to full volume a little slower than the Fender sound. And it gives the Fender a little more, um, to me, a little more definition on the notes. Now, uh, I don't have real Fenders and real Voxes here to try. I, actually, I do have a real Vox, but it's um, uh, 1230, so if I play it, I'll get kicked out. Um, these are emulations, so your mileage may vary, and you may have a different idea of what the jangle and the chime should sound like in your head. Uh, but that's what does it for me. I like to put things on um, and I tried a bunch of them to see how things would work. So let's go back to the Vox and walk through a couple of different effects here that work good on 12 strings. So modulation based effects, so time based effects are particularly well suited to 12 string. Um, but I had a, sort of a mixed ride with them. so. Uh, I'll show you a few. The, uh, the most obvious one that's um, built into the amp is uh, a tremolo. I have the tremolo on very low so uh, you can listen to the difference. So I have it low and slow to just give a little bit of a wavy feeling to the volume over time. There's a, a cool one that I've been playing with though that I'll put in now. Where it is called the Great Escape and it's built after a pedal of the same name and it has what's called an envelope follower on it. Uh, and an envelope follower basically picks up the volume of your guitar and changes something on the machine uh, depending on how loud your guitar is. So right now if you watch the green light, so how fast um, the green light goes determines the tremolo. Now I've got it on a square wave right now, which turns it on and off, which does some cool things. So let me let me just show you that. some subtler stuff too so let's um let's go with that for a bit uh and there we go so we'll change the wave from an on and off square to a triangle which slopes up and down and you hear how the tremolo So we'll play with the threshold here. And this uh, polarity switch, basically, uh, I can set it so that it starts slow and goes fast at the end as it quiets down, or vice versa. Thank you. 
so that one's useful, a little bit fancier than the usual. And then um, this one's interesting. This is a developer, uh, oh, what's his name? Jerome Brebard, I think. Uh, anyway, um, his stuff is wildly uneven. Uh, half the time I can't get it to work or it'll just have major flaws. And then it's always worth checking his stuff out, though, because thrown in there with everything else, he'll have something, okay, ATK stereo phaser sounds like a phase shifter effect. Um, but when you hook this up to a pedal, it is fun. I'm using a, a host called Vigil here, so I want to give them a shout out. I've used it for probably close to eh, 13, 14 years now. And if you want to experiment on the guitar, this is the ticket to do it, because you can pretty much hook up anything to anything. Here's another, this is a freebie. Uh, actually, let's see, I think all of these so far are freebies. Bias Amp isn't, of course. And this one I thought didn't really do much until, like... But now I can't make it not do much. So that's the space modulator. Uh, that'd be fun getting some MIDI controllers hooked up to, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. Uh, I suppose we could try one. Uh, let's just see what's a... two pedals so I might as well hook up two things so let's see how this goes with uh, two pedals on two feet contenders but I took them out because they just didn't work out well as I thought they would I thought they'd work great uh, one was a sort of on uh, uh, panner on steroids called Brower motion um, but all it did was make the sound disappear and come back no matter how uh, subtly I tried to set it uh, and the other is from one of my favorite companies Ohm Industries or whatever they're called 
that make the Ohm Boys Echo, they have a modulation tool called Mobile Ohm. And uh, over the years, I've acquired all their stuff, and that's pretty versatile. Actually, maybe I'll hook that up. And I'll uh, see if I got my patch, Mobile Ohm. There we go. <laughs> Sync this one. So you can hear that's pretty subtle. Partly, I think, if I played with uh, the effect a little longer, maybe read the manual, I could get more out of it. Um, but I've saved my favorite for last on the bias amp anyway. Uh, and that is another freebie. Uh, Mobile Ohm, by the way, is not a freebie. Uh, they've uh, I've slowly paid for those over time. They occasionally have deals. Akon is a digital chorus, and I'm not usually too crazy about choruses, especially the emulations of 80 cents. It's like, yeah, they kind of sounded bad then. Uh, why would I want a chorus that sounds bad now? Um, but the idea with a chorus is you get slightly echoed, very tight echo, like too close to here a few different times. So this one I think has, uh, I've got it set up to four voices and the stereo spread is all out. So the the chorus basically can spread a, a one note sound around the, um, the panning spectrum, uh, but also uh, give it a little bit more depth and make it feel a little fuller. <laughs> Again, this is a, it's a pretty subtle effect. Uh, let me load my preset if I've got it. Yeah. I've got one, uh, the A and the B set up to um, compare on and off. So here's off. get away from the jangle and chime and one of the cool things about this Dan Electro is you can get downright gnarly on the sound uh, with distortion and stuff it's uh, uh, the pickups have a wide variety of sounds that you can pull out of them and uh, most of the time people go for pretty with the uh, 12 string uh, let me take the pick out of my mouth so I don't sound like a uh, Dick Cheney. Most of the time people go for a pretty and clean or slightly chimey sound on the 12 string, uh, but there's a whole genre that uses the 12 string in a different way called shoegaze. And I don't have shoes on, so I can't do proper shoegaze. We'll see if I can give you a little bit of the general idea. So the idea in shoegaze guitar is it's a wall of sound and it's so muffled you can't tell what's what in the sound um, and the way I'm gonna get that is through this uh, combination delay reverb and distortion that I found buried away in the positive grid pedal section so very gnarly uh, so I've got it set up very low with a very low mix and it's still so that's um, with the echo and the mix-up, but I've got it, the echo turned uh, basically off. Uh, 
And it still distorts the sound like crazy. I'm going to go a little bit over. Since I got started a little late, all the people listening, I want to make sure you get your money's worth. Uh, seeing as there's none of you out there and you didn't pay anything, I feel compelled to play an extra few minutes. So let's actually pull up the other amp. I've been working with um, biases versatile positive grid bias fx uh, which lets you drill into the amps uh, as far as you want to go you can pick all these different cabinets and microphones you have some of the same choices on scuffum's s gear uh, but the amp itself the amps themselves are uh, modeled on uh, real amps. You can't dig in quite as deep, uh, but you do have a lot of control over them. So what I'm going to do here is get a much more modern I think I just brought us all the way up to the 80s. We'll get the S gear do the chorus. I'll leave the Akon off. Multiply is on B. And that echoes a little much. So I'll tune that down a little and maybe put a tiny bit. Yeah, even that's too much. There we go, just a little tiny bit of detuning. Uh, tighten up the delay a little. Actually, let's uh, hook that up. Down in the mix, down in the tone, up in the width, down in the feedback. So this amp is modeled, it's made for it's uh, some kick-ass distortion that you can get up into metal territory with. Uh, but its cleans are really, really sparkly and good for like country kind of stuff even. Uh, so country players that use um, S gear uh, have remarked on how, how nice this amp is for doing real clean ringing tones. Uh, and it's different from the Fender. I'm pretty sure it's based on a Soldano amp which I don't really know a bunch about, except some of the uh, Shredder-type Satriani dudes play it. Steve Vai, Satriani, those guys have uh, been known to play them. I don't know if they still do, but... But it's a, a, a different tonal thing than the fenders and the boxes altogether, even though it's still supposed to be a two-bass amp. So I'm going to play a couple songs to close things out.
that's it for me. I'm the digital guitarist, and this has been Sleepwalking with me. Uh, and I'll probably be up for a little while longer. Um, but I'm gonna stop playing for now and let it go for the evening. So thanks for listening. If you did, I don't think we had anybody tonight. So I think uh, this is the longest running uh, weekly show with no audience. Uh, but actually, once I put up the videos afterwards, I edit them down a little bit and put them up. Uh, those have been getting plenty of listens, so uh, I'm not worried about it too much. So thanks for listening if you did, or if this is the future. Thank you for listening in the future. Okay, that's it for